Hi everyone, John Pokertrip Friedberg here with another episode of Stacking Chips, your strategy source for the 2007 World Series of Poker, the Bellagio Cup, and the dozens of other events going on here in lovely Las Vegas. Today is Monday, and it's the $2,500 No Limit Hold'em event. I'm excited about this. I had yesterday off. Uh, my cold is pretty much completely gone now, and um, I'm looking forward to another big field today. Uh, obviously, big pr uh, big prize pool. Bigger starting stack with 2,500 buying. We'll be starting the tournament with 5,000 chips. So um, there should be just that much more play to today's event. So I'm excited. Um, let's see what else. I wanted to finally talk about some of the hands that I played in the $1,500 pot limit that I final tabled. There's, there's two key hands that allowed me to advance as deep as I did into the final table. And then, of course, there's some hands that I played at the final table that also led to my third place finish as opposed to an eighth or a ninth or you know any other finish. So I want to first talk about the two hands that allowed me to advance to the final table. And um, then I think on tomorrow's episode, I'll talk about the hands I played at the final table. Now, both of these hands that I want to talk about today are mistakes made by my opponents, huge mistakes made by my opponents made by my opponents. Um, the first hand, it was pretty early in the tournament. The blinds were two and four hundred. There's not an ante because this is pot limit hole and there's no antes in pot limit. So the blinds were two and four hundred. I made a raise in middle position with an ace ten, an offsuit ace ten. The um, small blind calls me and the flop comes ace six whatever, ace six eight or something, ace six seven maybe. And um, Again, I had an ace, ace-10. The uh, I don't know what the small blind had, but I figure I was going to slow play a little bit. So he checks to me, and I check the flop trying to um, represent the fact that I do not have an ace, so I can trap him for more chips on the turn. The uh, turn came another ace, which is a perfect card for me, because now he doesn't think I have an ace. I don't think he has an ace. Uh, but anyway, there's you know so now I have three aces. Well, he... Um, I think he makes a, a bet here, and I make a raise, and he calls. Okay, the river puts a. Uh, I think the river puts a flush card out there. I don't remember exactly what happened, but I'm pretty sure the river put a flush card out there. And there's there's probably six thousand in the pot at this point, and the guy bets out a thousand on the river. I had probably five thousand in chips, maybe six thousand in chips at the at this on the river card. And the guy bets out a thousand in chips, and um, so I'm looking at the board. You know, he could have a flush, he could have a full house, he could have a bigger ace than me. Long story short, I just call. The guy had flopped a set of sixes, so I was, you know, drawing almost dead pretty much. But he could have extracted a lot more chips out out of me. So when he bet into me on the turn and I raised, and he just called, he could have shoved there, and I'm I'm insta calling. Similarly, on the river, he could have made a big bet on the river, and I'm probably going to call that too. So his mistake there was completely not maximizing the value of his hand in a spot where he could have, and betting $1,000 on a, whatever, a 6K pot on the turn when I have a monster, he, he could have bet a lot more, could have gotten a lot more chips out of me, so he, he really failed to extract any real value out of his hand um, on that particular hand, which ultimately led to me still having, you know, a healthy amount of chips. I, st I was still left with five or six thousand in chips after the hand was over. So that was one mistake that allowed me to still have some chips to, to play with when he should have busted me or certainly come close to it. Um, the next hand, actually at the dinner break, there was one hand I was all in, but the only time I was all in pre preflop in this whole tournament, um, I was actually the, a dog. I had queens against aces. Uh, it was like one of the first hands after the dinner break. The blinds were like, uh, I think the blinds were like three and six hundred. It was raised to about two thousand. I re raised all in for, uh, for six thousand with queens. He had aces. I flopped a queen and won that hand. Anyway, so I chip up to about 30k when I get involved in a huge hand. Um, a, another mistake made by one of my opponents, and this one was a very costly mistake for him. The, um, let's see, I had, uh, there was an early position raiser. Actually, the guy under the gun raised, and he was playing very, very tight. 
I call from the small blind with pocket sixes, knowing that if my opponent hits something, he's going to he's going to be playing it pretty strong. If he misses, he's going to be playing it pretty weak. And I felt that I had a good chance of either flopping a set, and um, you know, I right away I assume he's on you know big cards, either ace king, you know, big pair or something. But he's not going to come. He's not going to make a raise there with like a seven nine. The guy was just playing way too tight. So I figure I'm going to come in with sixes. And I'm either going to flop a lower, you know, a set against his bigger pair, or just let him miss the flop and outplay him, you know, post flop. The second hand, well, the second hand where my opponent made a mistake, the guy made a huge mistake. He was an early position raiser. The blinds were were bigger at this point. I had about thirty thousand in chips. He had somewhere between twenty five and thirty thousand in chips also. And um, this is maybe an hour or two after the dinner break, so. If memory serves, the uh, yeah, the blinds I think were six and twelve hundred. So guy in first position who's playing super tight makes a raise in early position. It's folded around to me in the small blind. I have pocket sixes, so I make a call. And what I'm, my thought process here is that I know this guy has a big hand. He either has ace king, ace queen, or a big pair because he's the guy has not you know been tricky at all, and. The way he's been playing his hands, if he hits his hands, he plays them pretty hard. If he misses, he plays them very soft, very passive. So I knew that either I was going to flop a set against one of his, you know, a top pair or something, and hopefully extract a lot of chips from him, or he was going to miss the flop entirely, and um, I was going to be able to outplay him. Or, of course, he was going to hit the flop and I was going to miss, in which case I just easily fold the hand. Well, the flop came... Ace King three with two spades, so I completely missed the flop, and um, I check here. Ch I check to him, knowing right away that if he puts you know anything in the pot, I'm insta folding. So I check the flop on the Ace King three with two spades. He also checks. So now I'm thinking, okay, that's that's weird. Uh, actually, sorry, it was um, King Queen three, not Ace King three. Um, so the turn card pairs the board with a three, but it puts a second flush draw out there. I think now there's two spades and two hearts out there. Again, I have sixes, the board is king, queen, three, three. So I bet out 5,500, which was, um, it was uh, probably between half to a, half to three quarters of the pot. So I'm, I'm putting out a bet there. I think he's got nothing. I'm just trying to steal the pot. Well, he just calls. He calls 5,500. So now I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm done with the hand because the guy, he's got me beat. He either has a king or a queen. He could have a flush draw or he could be slow playing a set or you know, a full house at this point because there was a pair on the board. So anyway, long story short, the river brings a six, which fills me up. So I'm hoping that he, he wasn't slow playing kings or queens, but I really didn't think he was based on how he had been playing. So I put out a big bet here, a pot-sized bet almost of... Um, uh, actually, he only had about fourteen thousand left, so I bet out fourteen thousand. And um, sure enough, he called there. He turns over Ace King, so he flopped top pair, top kicker. I had pocket sixes for sixes full of threes, and I busted him out of the tournament. And he, th the reason he played, I mean, he played that hand so poorly. All he has to do is make. He had two chances to win that pot. First chance would would have been to bet the flop. I mean, he he made a standard raise under the gun with ace king. The flop came king queen three with two spades. He's supposed to bet there, and if he bets there, I fold instantly. The second opportunity to win the hand came on the turn, when the board was king queen three three, and I bet out fifty five hundred. I mean, he's at that point, he's got let's see, he had fourteen on the river plus fifty five on the turn, so he had about twenty thousand. I bet out 5,500. He could have easily pushed all in there in that spot, because most likely there's not a card in the deck that could hit on the river that would that would not allow him to call off his chips on the river anyway in that spot. So, in the event that I was on a draw or a queen or a weaker king or something, he absolutely should have moved all in there. And of course, I would have folded my sixes. But instead, he uh, he played a very soft. He played very slow, passively. And I got lucky by hitting my six on the river because he played his hand poorly. And um, that gave me a lot of chips. That put me up to um, like over 60,000 in chips. I was in the top probably five in chip counts at the time there. 
and um, that gave me the ammunition that I needed to continue chipping up and eventually getting to the final table later on that night. So that's it for my hands, um, the, the important hands I played earlier in the tournament and the 1500 pot limit. Tomorrow or the next day I'm going to discuss some of the key hands at the final table which weren't quite as dramatic as, as those hands because the final table didn't have quite as much action but I will talk about my final table experience then. But right now I want to get to my guest. His name is Kirk Morrison. He's been red hot lately. Uh, his biggest score lately was coming in second place in the Bellagio $25,000 buy-in World Poker Tour Championship. He took second for just over $2 million. He's also had a couple of other final tables recently. He's been on fire. Ladies and gentlemen, Kirk Morrison. Kirk, thanks for coming on the show, man. Glad to have you here. That's why, Johnny. So you and I have been buddies for a very long time. We, we played poker together in Tucson starting around 94? 90, it was early. 90, Maybe 94, 94 like 95? It was early. Yeah, so you and I became pretty close friends out in Tucson. Yeah. Um, I left Tucson, saw you playing in California a few times, and then you and I sort of lost touch. That's right. And then uh, you came out of nowhere. I see you, uh, I think it was at the Bicycle Club, Legends of Poker, this last year, last August. And since then, you've been just on fire. Yeah. What well, happened? I, I, I completely disappeared. You weren't the only one I lost contact with. I lost contact with just everybody. I... Uh, Completely uh, got burnt out on poker there for a bit, and uh, went down to New Zealand for uh, to go veg, uh, veg out and hang out and clear my mind for about three months. And um, that three months turned into about seven years. I loved it so much, so I just got I ended up staying down there. But now I got the itch again. I'm back, and uh, yeah, it's been going well. You know, it uh, didn't start off too well, Johnny. Um, when I came back, uh, the first six months I came back February of last year. And I thought I was going to be a piece of piss, get right on the back of the bike and run over everybody, and that's just not the case, you know. Uh, all these kids are playing like uh, like I was back in the day, and uh, I, I may be pretty gun-shy. And I, I turned into an 80-year-old man overnight, just like that, you know. And uh, I, I was the I was the guy, I always looked at the table and said, God, I was running over this guy all the time. I actually turned into that guy, you know, for a while there. And uh, so I wasn't real happy with my results, I wasn't going anywhere. And because uh, I think Mike Sexton even said in an article a long time ago, a card player back in the '90s, there's only he can count the number of people that can actually win a tournament on a day in and day out basis because nobody played aggressively. Now everybody's doing it, you know. And so I sit down at the table, and every other player plays like the, like the way I used to. So that that kind of threw me for a loop, you know. And obviously the results showed it. I just did absolute jack squat, you know. And it took me a while and. And I'm pretty close with Daniel, and um, he's the reason I'm basically, basically back here right now. And um, uh, he, he and I talked about it a bit, but he just left me alone. He knew I'd eventually figure it out, you know. And he knows I don't like being told what to do as far as when it comes to the poker table. He's got, I, I go off so much by instinct and by reading people. But I eventually just sucked it up, and you know. Uh, Took my panties off and stopped being a little girl at the table. I don't know if I should say that. There's nothing, nothing wrong as I guess you. Well, we did have the ladies' event yesterday, and I had Lacey Jones here to talk. Uh oh. About it. But, uh, uh, figure of speech, figure of speech only. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, I, uh, I I finally just said to hell with it. I'm getting back to play the way I used to play. Be aggressive and rely on my reads. And number one thing is is see every flop. I smooth call with aces. I very rarely raise preflop anymore. I just want to see every pot. So let's let's talk about that for a little bit. Mm -hmm. You and I, I've played with you a little bit recently, and I've certainly read a lot about your game by following your the, your, the tournaments you've gone deep in lately. You play a lot of pots, right? Which wasn't really the style that you used to play. So you've transitioned into this sort of a looser, smaller mm -hmm. pot, you know, small ball small player. Ball. Tell us a little bit about how that how that has worked out for you. How Seeing so many flops is advantageous to you. Well, I got tired of just gambling, you know, putting all the money in pre-flop, which a lot of these players do. And there are some, you know, I'm not saying it's completely wrong, but uh, uh, seeing a lot of flops now has, has turned out tremendous for me. You know, a lot of these guys that have no idea how to play post-flop. I shouldn't say no idea, but they're just very, they're a lot weaker post-flop. And uh, I got a lot more situations pop up where it gives me an extra chance to win the pot. So. Uh, it's 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 turned out obviously the results showed it you know uh, since I've since I've changed that and seen every flop I'll even you know I'm I I think it was the LA Poker Classic when I first utilized it I bubbled that tournament but uh, I said I'm not going to raise 
pre-flop or re-raise pre-flop with any hand. You know, uh, you know, and there's a lot of times where I'm, you know, I had aces in this spot, and like, is it absolutely no brainer? But I said to myself, I'm not. I'm just going to try it. I'm just going to completely go away from just re-raising pre-flop with anything, just to try it. And since I've done that, I've pretty much stuck to it. You know, pretty much stuck to it, and it's just it's gone extremely well for me, extremely well. So, now that sounds um, similar to how Daniel plays. Was this new strategy of yours derived by, you said you and Daniel are close, are you guys yeah. working together, or are you guys sort of collaborating on... He's, Holly, he wants to talk about his golf, you know, so... <laughs> no, actually, we, we rarely talk poker. I just, it just, I, he let me figure it out, you know. Uh, I've never read any books, John, you know, and I've just, I've always bought off the seat of my pants, and, uh, uh, but it's, it's... I just it took a, it took a little while for me to figure out, but it's 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 going all right right now. So I'm not going to change it. It sure is. So you had a um, I, I remember I was talking to you in March mm. at Reno mm -hmm. at the at the uh, Grand Sierra Resort for That's the right. WPT event before the event started when we were watching your friend who ended up winning one That's of the right. preliminary events. That's right. So you and I were talking. You were explaining how. Um, you know, you were just waiting for the big score, and you know you were That's doing right. okay. But you why know. you're buying me Johnny Rockets? Is I got two dollars <laughs> in my pocket. Right. No. <laughs> you still have money for that. So anyway, you go on to um, I think you final tabled that event, yes, right? I did. Yes. And then I don't remember what else happened after that, but you then final table the 25k Bellagio World Poker Tour Championship, yeah. finishing second for yeah. just over two million dollars. Yes. Yeah, that was fantastic. I Tell us about that. Well, I'll give, you, I'll give you the big ego trip. Uh, like I said, I just bubbled LA Poker Classic, and then I went on to uh, cash four consecutive WPTs, right. which, which tied Daniel's, Daniel's record. record. And, and, and believe me, I think deep down somewhere he didn't want me to get that fifth one, even though he has an invested interest in me. But I, yeah, I know Danny's pretty competitive. But uh, now with San Jose, um, Grand Sierra, then I was dead tired. But Danny made me get up to Foxwoods, which I really didn't want to go up there. But I cashed there as well. Um, and then uh, the big one was at uh, WPT where uh, Carlos and I played heads up for like three hours or something like that and had a battle. And uh, yeah, that was great. Now, you were chip leader in the 25K event for a lot of the later stages of the tournament. I was, I was up there for most of the day. You know? most, most of the tournament. I was just, you know, I, didn't, I was able to maintain it. And, right. And uh, a lot of players, and including myself, you know, at some times it's very tough to play a big stack, you know, because you think you have to do this, you don't have to do that. But everything just. My my chi was going real good, you know, for the four or five days there. So uh, uh, I played against. Uh, it, it was kind of nice for the second day to have Sammy Farhaw on my right most of the day, and he had he and I were like chip leaders at the time, and so I kind of having me being on his left, I, I kind of kept him in check. It was kind of fun being like it was the first time I ever played with Sammy, so that was good. Yeah. yeah. Were there any really interesting or big hands where you had any tough decisions to make at all? Day three, I think it was. John, I, I was a really, really big pot. Um, we were up on the, the main stage there on, in the Fontana room. And um, uh, it was against a gentleman I've never played with before. Uh, the guy had probably about eight coffees in him already. and uh, But he seemed like a nice fellow. And um, I, the only other player I really recognized at the table was Patrick Atonius. Uh, he was sitting in seat two, and uh, this big hand came up. Where I was on the button, I had two queens, and uh, of course I popped it up a little bit. You know, uh, I didn't sooth call because everybody passed me. I don't want to contradict what I said earlier, but it got passed to me, so I popped it up on the button. And um, uh, the guy, you know, he uh, smooth calls me. Flop comes down, um, king, king ten three, I think it was exactly. Yeah, king ten three, and. Um, uh, with two diamonds, he checks to me, and I, I pop it. I, I I bet about I don't know, close to pot size, and uh, he raises me, all right for oh I don't know three times the amount I, I reckon it's right, right around there, but he just did something you know and, uh, and I don't I don't to explain it really Johnny as uh, I, I I fancy myself reading micro expressions really really well. And uh, even though my right brain doesn't speak to this, you know, my left side too well, I can't explain it. I just know it, you know? And I knew something was funny just right there. And uh, so I, I said, oh, I'm going to try to take this off on the turn. I'm going to try to lock him up and see what he does. So I, I, I just I, I flat call him, and on the turn he did lock up. So he checked, the turn card came in a nonchalant three. 
He checks it to me, and so I was like, he doesn't have his king. There's no way he has ace king here. I know he doesn't have ace king now, or he doesn't, have, he doesn't even have a king, you know. Um, so I pop out a good size bet, and about, uh, which about 60% of the pot calls me instantly. I'm like, oh god, wait a minute here, you know. But I, I know I, I, I have the queen of diamonds in my hand too. There's there's king ten of diamonds, and so but I just really for, deep down I just I thought he was trying something. He was acting kind of goofy, and I didn't put him on a diamond draw. Well, the river immediately came the nine of diamonds. Instantly, he pushes all his money in, you know, which was about 150 thousand in chips. And this would have absolutely crippled me at the time. This would have crippled me if I, you know. And I thought and thought and thought and thought forever, and. This this process went on for, for like maybe eight minutes, and, and Patrick uh, was for I turned him alive. Patrick told us he called the clock, you know, and um, uh, which I wasn't real happy about, you know, but, uh, because he's an extremely slow player. <laughs> but in this situation, it, it put me under the bat. They called. They I asked the guy like all kinds of questions, trying to get anything out of him, and uh, in in between that time, he had another coffee, and. Um, then I came to the the feeling I said, I, I think he's got you know jack of diamonds, jack of clubs in his hands. And I asked him when there I was about twenty seconds left on the clock. I said, uh, I said you got jack of diamonds, jack of clubs in your hand. I call and he turned over jack of diamonds, jack of clubs. And I was like, I was like, wow, you know. Well, and I, I just I just felt it. I just knew it, you know. And I I probably could have just I didn't have to really get involved in this in the spot when I got check raised on the flop, you know. I just because uh, I had a, a plenty of chips, but it's just one of those situations where it came down to you know. Uh, old school poker. I just thought I had the best hand, and it worked out all right. I don't know if I explained that perfectly, but yeah, you know. absolutely. Well, what a, I mean, what a great read that was. Yes, it was. Yeah, I was. I was, I was pretty happy. About Not it. all players can can read their opponents on the hand and the suits. That yeah, they that was sick. That was pretty sick. And, but uh, uh, yeah, he, he choked on his coffee after that, and we shook hands, and that was good. And then Patrick says. He goes, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I said, you better be. <laughs> So since then, or since the World Series this year, you final tabled the first event, right? Yeah. The half, the five thousand buy-in, mm -hmm. half hold 'em, half no limit hold 'em. Yep. So um, it's you're off to a good start already. How did you finish in that event? I finished seventh, which was a bit disappointing. After I got there, I really wanted to do something, but uh, I just got. I, when you go card dead, you go card dead. But usually, I try to manufacture something. But every time I tried to manufacture something, somebody would just step right into it, and you know, I was, so I had my hands tied the whole day. Um, I wasn't too happy with that, but uh, I gotta be happy with making another final table right off the bat. You know, I've, I'm rolling. You know? Yeah. Um, this is a big month. This month, I'm just gonna try to pace myself. I don't want to get into the old Kirk from frenzy and try to play four tournaments at once with the super satellite and you know play with all the cocktail waitresses. You know, so <laughs> I'm trying not to do all those things at the same time. Well, so. fortunately for you, the cocktail waitresses aren't. <laughs> all that great this no. year. So. Those are for guys. Yeah, <laughs> That's right. a problem. So old guys. <laughs> <laughs> so what are your plans for the rest of the World Series? Oh, probably final table another thirty, thirty-five events probably. Yeah. You know, good luck to you. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm really gonna concentrate on the fifty k horse. I'm gonna try to concentrate on any event I'm playing, but I'm really focusing on the fifty k horse. Uh, I fancy myself in all those games, so. Uh, it's 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 going to be a big tournament for me. So hopefully I can, uh, you know, shake it up and uh, let these boys know who I used to be. And after the World Series, are we going to continue to see you at the uh, WPT events and maybe some European events? For yep, absolutely. For a few events at the WPT, go over to Europe and play a bit. But after that, Johnny, I might just give it up. I might just. Uh, I think you don't. So. <laughs> I don't know. I might put one more year into it, and I do. I come back down to New Zealand, hang out for another decade, and try to run out of money, and come back again. <laughs> All right. Well, Kirk, best of luck today in the uh, twenty-five hundred no limit. I say you too. Thank you. Excellent. And uh, hopefully, we'll end up heads up at the final table. You want to say it, please? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. All right. I'll give you one percent. You give me fifteen. That's, 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 <laughs> probably, that's probably even money, yeah, right? Two percent. You see it <laughs> here. Two percent. Two percent. All right, everyone. That's it for today's episode of Stacking Chips. Make sure to tune in tomorrow and every day throughout the World Series for more strategy talk, discussion, and more right here on Card Player TV. And keep those emails coming at stackingchips at cardplayer.com. From John Poker Chip Friedberg and Kirk Morrison, we're out of here. Good luck, Cheers, and guys. we'll see you guys tomorrow. Cheers.